Welcome guys uh, back again to uh, episode, what, this is episode 12, 12 yep. <laughs> of our podcast. Thank you, Shok. Um, thank y'all for the support, for everything, guys. Um, as y'all already know, we have a Titanfall giveaway going on right now. We're supposed to close that on the 4th, but, you know, I guess, we, um, I guess we're going to continue with it to give more people a chance to actually, you know, win a copy of that game. Shouts to Microsoft and Respawn Entertainment, if I'm saying their name correctly, um, and also EA for that title. Now, how's everybody's week been? Mine's been great. How's everybody's week been? I've been pretty good, been pretty busy at work, making videos, and etc. Been pretty good, productive. Uh, choke, choke. Mine is, mine is this, this hole we've had in our air mattress. My week was fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we wake up every morning and like we're pretty much like sunken into the mattress, like touching the ground because it's like losing air. But we, we finally found the hole and hatched that. <laughs> Man, you know, was, uh, you, y'all, y'all gotta laugh at this real funny because the first, first time, uh, just a little bit off subject here, guys. Uh, first time me and my brother and my dad and my stepmom, we uh, first moved down here from New Jersey and um, we moved in the house. We didn't have any beds and nothing in there at all. And we had, you know, air mattresses. And um, it was me and my brother sleeping on an air mattress. And one night we were sleeping on an air mattress. And for some reason, I was like, man, I know we put air in this doggone thing. It just basically deflated and we're on the ground. And I'm like, what the, what's going on? (laughs) So we inflated it again and went to bed the next night. Turned out it was a big old hole in the side of the doggone air mattress. So I had a gum in my mouth while I was asleep. I just put a big old gum over it. Wow. <laughs> thinking that it was gonna hold it. And then I got up the, the same the, the the next morning or whatever, and sure enough it was on the ground. So yeah, y'all gotta watch out for them air mattresses. Yeah. Them Walmart air, air mattresses, of course. Yeah, yeah, don't believe the cartoons you see. Gum doesn't solve everything like that. Mm-mm. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. All right, let's move on uh, to the topics, to the titles at hand. And uh, again, thank you all so much for listening to us. And we're actually going to um, put our podcast, you know, out more. Like we're going to have it on iTunes. We're going to put it out on um, different, different providers and stuff like that. That way y'all can actually, you know, listen in more uh, for the new listeners and uh, current listeners, uh, we want to thank y'all so much. All right, so let's head off in the podcast. So the first thing is this: Microsoft's biggest surprise might be coming to E3. Okay, might be coming to E3 2014. So apparently, Microsoft is cooking up something uh, for E3 2014. Connect uh, three. <laughs> I think that's a little bit too early, Michael. <laughs> but this is what I want to uh, touch up on that with because apparently there are, um, I believe, some titles that they're going to come out with, some exclusive titles that are in the works. One of them I already know is probably going to be Halo. They're going to be talking about it, showing off gameplay, maybe trailers or something, or release date. Other one is the new Gears of War. As many uh, of us know so far, um, I guess uh, Microsoft owns the right to Gears of War now, so they're probably going to show off some Gears of War trailer or footages of that. Also, they might show some other exclusive games that they have, you know, on the wraps or whatever. But the most important one is probably the 399 Xbox One, and I'm calling it either 399 or uh, somewhere in the four bracket but it's definitely going to be another skew coming out at E3. I just feel it onto my bones because people have been talking about this you know Microsoft yeah they need to drop the price which they're not going to drop the price because it's too soon so they're probably going to come out with another uh, model but I don't know if y'all have anything to shed on this but 
this big surprise to me is probably just a bunch of exclusive games and probably some updates to the Xbox One and um, and probably a cheaper uh, Xbox One also. Anybody want to share anything on that? Well, uh, mm -hmm. oh, go ahead, Michael. Mm -hmm. No, go well, ahead. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. Like my thing is, I don't know if it's just me, but it's like this whole time Microsoft teases something, then it gets revealed. It's never really, you know, that big. You know, mm -hmm. like the last mm -hmm. time they did, so like we got big news to announce tomorrow, and then it's like we got the Gears of War license, and everybody was kind of like, okay, you know, like, <laughs> you know, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I mean, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, um, I agree with Marlon. I think it's just gonna be, you know, some certain exclusives, or whatever. But well, exclusives are always nice. You know, that's the most important thing you can have on the system. But mm -hmm. and this isn't Microsoft hate or anything, but I just feel kind of like the exclusives that Microsoft gets their hands on aren't really. They're not as compelling as the kinds of exclusives that, you know, so, uh, Sony and Nintendo bring to the table. And I don't know if that's just me, but I don't know. It's just, it's just something about Microsoft's exclusives or, you know, something about the game will be off or kind of weird. Like, for instance, you know, how Titanfall, you know, no single player it has this, that, only six players, whatever. It's like, it just seems how, it just seems that Microsoft's exclusives are always either just, you know, okay or... I don't know. They're just never megaton, you know, to me. That's just how I feel. Yeah. Hmm. yeah uh, and pretty much, uh, right. I don't have much to shed on that. It's basically, I'd just be repeating what Shoke said. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. Like I said, Shoke is right because Microsoft, you know, they're not the, the, the Santa Claus when it comes to surprises and gifts and stuff like that, yeah. when it, you know, to shock everybody. Sony is, good, is known for that. Uh, Nintendo, every now and again, you know, they might wow you with something, but nothing like, you know, compelling or interesting or anything like that. So I don't know what the big surprise is, but a couple of things is that, that is going on surrounding the launch of Titanfall is that um, there, there is going to be uh, $2,000 worth of prizes. At, um, this, is, this is gonna be taking place in Somerset Mall in Troy, Michigan, uh, the Microsoft Store. Um, in uh, Somerset Mall in, in Troy, Michigan is gonna be throwing a uh, launch party event. And there's going to be free food and drinks and stuff like that there. The first, peop the first 50 people in line will receive a custom Titanfall t-shirt. One selected winner will receive a free ride and ticket to this year's E3 to witness Microsoft's biggest surprise ever. The event will be held on Monday, March 10th from 9 p.m to midnight and will happen across several Microsoft stores in the US. All right, so y'all want if y'all in Michigan, y'all want to make sure y'all go to that or whatever so y'all can get a free ride to E3. Um, but that that I thought was like pretty cool for them to throw that yeah, little cool. thing there. Yeah, that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Um, I am really curious though, to say the least, since it's supposedly supposed to be their biggest surprise. That mm -hmm. should be interesting. Yeah, because like I said, Microsoft, when it comes to surprises, it's like, uh, yeah, it's not. Mm, yeah, it's like it's what they that. think is a surprise, like it's really not a surprise to us. Like, you know. Yeah, you know, so it's kind of Maybe like, they bought out both Sony and Nintendo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're always trying to buy out somebody. That would, that would certainly be a surprise. <laughs> they, it, yeah, it's always, probably going to be a partnership with some third party. You think mm -hmm. so? Yeah, more, more, more than likely, because I'm going to be laughing at E3 when, I, when I'm sitting there and soaking up everything like, oh, really, Microsoft, this is the biggest surprise? Yeah, I think I would just rather just, y'all just tweet it out or something, but saving it for E3. It's sort of like Nintendo going to the VGX to announce the freaking character for Donkey Kong, which mm -hmm. could have been tweeted out. But yeah. Let's get back on the matter at hand here. Let's move on. Now, this right here is going to be uh, 
involved with a lot of things that is going on with this game. And it's crazy because it's, it's, it, it's enough. Just like Shulk said in his last video with the 1080p stuff, enough is enough. Because I'm going to get off subject just for a little bit. And I just want to say this, you know, this is next gen. And the whole resolution thing, that is not important. What is important is graphics, gameplay, uh, varieties, innovation, um, doing something that you can't do on the last system. That is next gen. Something that you cannot achieve on PS3 and Xbox 360. That's next gen. So with Titanfall, apparently, now this, y'all gonna be mad when y'all hear this. And, I, and believe me, y'all gonna be upset because Microsoft, we already know they're rich. We already know that they got a whole lot of money, they're a software giant, and yeah, they just want to ball on everybody. They're the big high rollers in this industry. Now, apparently, Titanfall on the Xbox One, they invested $50 million to get that game exclusive on the Xbox One. Wow. Now, check this out. This is the type of stuff that, that makes me upset because Titanfall, originally, the game is developed for 360 and PS3. Not, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, for PC and, um, and for Xbox 360. Not for, uh, the, the ne for, not for the next gen systems from the ground up. It wasn't designed to be a next gen game. It was really designed for the last gen. And basically, Microsoft said, wait a minute. We need to sell more units. Hey, you know, let's buy out this game and get it on the Xbox One. And it's kind of like, I understand you're trying to, you know, beef up your, 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 uh, your last gen system and, you know, have what's good for it or whatever. But at the same time, you're coming out with a new hardware a new system, okay, why, why don't you just say, all right, let's, let's invest that $50 million on something else, on a new IP. $50 million on a last-gen game? A 50 that or 50 really sounds that, like a smart investment. That doesn't make any sense. And this, this <laughs> for, game, for one game. For one game, Michael, for one game. And Microsoft is not the smartest when it comes to buying out stuff. Let's be clear on this. They murdered and Rare. The, yeah, and the fanboys are going to get mad and they're going to leave the comments, but I don't care. We state the facts because we're journalists. That's what we do. We research and state the facts. And the fact is, this is a dumb move. Whoever <laughs> their person is in, the, in the, uh, the marketing section or whoever close out the investment deals, come on, they need to be fired. They need to get a boot to the behind, go straight to El Paso or something because this is crazy. Like $50 million on Titanfall, don't get me wrong, the gameplay is good. Gameplay is good. The game is not a bad game. It's just the quality could have been so much better. And you're putting this on your next gen system, but it doesn't look next gen at all. People that play the beta on the PC is saying that, oh wow, we need to pick it up for the PC because it looks so much better on the PC than it is on the Xbox One. And that is crazy. You spend all this money on a game that is not even next gen. It's not even, I can see if Okay, they're open. Okay, let's say, you know, Respawn Entertainment, they're open to anybody. And they're open to Nintendo, they're open to Sony, they're, they're open to Microsoft. Microsoft is like, okay, this game looks really good. Let me go ahead and grab this game before anybody gets a chance to grab it. That's fine, because you see the potential in the product that it's gonna sell. But this game has already been developed for the 360, it has already been developed for the for the um, for the Xbox, um, I mean, sorry, it's already been developed for the 360, already been developed for the PC. So the engine, the engine is what's important. The engine is what's important for a game because you know if I have a gun and I blow a hole through the wall, 
or if somebody you know shot you or something like that you want to see that particle effect you want to see the bullet you know going through the flesh and you want to see that realism that's what separates last gen from next gen is the is the engine everybody has to improve their engines you know what I'm saying? When you're when you stepping up to next gen, you want to be able to improve your engine. This engine uh, that they're using for Titanfall is an old engine, okay? That old engine that they use for, I guess, some other game. It's the um, it's the source engine. Source source engine, yes, yeah. the source engine. That engine is not brand new. They didn't build that engine from the ground up. It's an old engine. So. When you're going to spend 50 million, listen up Microsoft, listen to the podcast. When you're going to spend $50 million, doggone it, let it be a good title. Let it be a new IP. Let it be something that we've never seen before. Yeah. Like, this is ridiculous. On Titanfall? Don't get me wrong. It's going to sell like crazy because you know what? I I tell y'all something. This is their way of saying, oh, let's try to keep up with Sony. Y'all can't even keep up with Sony because you know what? I'm gonna get off topic again and let y'all know a little story. I got, my wife bought me my PS4 and we were trying to find the PS4 all week long, everywhere is sold out. Mind you, y'all, the system came out, what, like five months ago? Still sold out. Stores would be getting two, three, and four and they still sold out. You know, like they, they only get like limited amount <laughs> and the Xbox ones are still stacking up on shelf. So Microsoft is like, okay, if we invest $50 million, we're going to get our $50 million back plus more if we come out with a Titanfall bundle. Now, the problem is with the Titanfall bundle, because I'm sure they invested millions of dollars in that Titanfall uh, bundle with Respawn, including may, maybe it includes with that $50 million, or maybe it's a separate deal that they did with Respawn to actually bundle the Xbox One uh, with the game for the same price as the regular Xbox One. So my thing is this. If you're doing something like this and you're trying to keep up with your competitors, step your game up. You know, do something different. You know, don't just bundle the game uh, a digital copy of the game and then what one month of Xbox Live and then the dry plain bulk, bulky Xbox I mean can you put some like details on it and can you throw in a Titanfall controller y'all came out with the controller put a Titanfall controller in there you know kind of spice it up make people want to actually invest into it all y'all giving us is just the game that is nothing, I don't see the sweet deal that like everybody's been talking about. But when you're gonna invest $50 million Microsoft in a last gen title for your new gen title, that, I mean, for your new gen hardware, that is not, that is not, not the way to go. So enough said from me, anybody wanna t- take a piece of this because I know this is like real huge. Ooh. Yeah, I, I pretty much said what I thought of it already. Like, that's that's just a dumb business decision to me. Like, it's just for one game. It's just like you said. It, it should be, like, something innovative, something brand new, like a new IP, something worth investing in. But this is just, this is just one little game and spending $50 million just to get this exclusively to your system. I don't know. That That just doesn't make any sense to me. But you pretty much already hit on everything that I would talk about, so. So, yeah, um, I would not spend, what, 50 million, right? Yeah, 50 million. 50, wow. Uh, Yeah, to get get it to be, to get the same, okay. (laughs) The game was already exclusive to to, to, to their system already. It's already exclusive to 360 and PC. You know, Microsoft, they run PC, so... It's already exclusive to your system, and then you're gonna pay fifty more. more. You're gonna pay fifty million dollars more to get it on the Xbox to get it to get it exclusive to the Xbox One. Oh my god! Yeah, I god. wouldn't. I wouldn't spend fifty dollars for a uh, a port of a of a game that was uh you know made with you know um the last generation of hardware in mind. That that seems like fifty million dollars that could have went to something much more you know, much more needed or, or, you know, worthy. I was wondering why the game looks so, 
And I'm not, you know, I don't care about graphics like that, but I was always wondering why the game kind of looked underwhelming, and now I, I, I understand why, because it was made for the 360. And yeah, we, and we, and we and a lot of people it. don't know that. Yeah, that, I, I would say that's uh, good money, like not, not worth it. <laughs> it's not that to say it's just, a bad game, it just could have went through something that was actually made for the Xbox One. Exactly. From the ground up, yeah. like a new title or something. Yeah. Wow. That 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 is that is dumb. Like that's what I'm saying, man. Nobody thinks before they do things. Everybody just want to jump and oh, let me hurry up and do this because if I don't hurry up and do this, then I'm gonna miss out or you know um, I'm gonna just miss out because I can't keep up with Sony. You dog all right? Sony in their own lane. You stay in your lane. Why Sony maintaining their lane? It's it's just crazy. That's their way of keeping up with the PS4, because they feel like if they do that deal and bundle the system, bundle the game with the system, it's gonna you know shoot up sales and make more people want to buy the Xbox One. No sir. It all you gotta go back to the drawing board with that that one. So it, it's sad. Like I said, it's real sad, but it is what it is. Everybody gotta learn someday, right? Yeah. Yeah, I had no idea about that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's ridiculous. Last gen. Last gen. This game was designed for basically PS3 and 360. That's basically the technology behind the game. Last gen engine. You know what I'm saying? That's why the game looked like that. It's basic all it is, it's basically like a port. It's basically like a NBA 2K port from last gen to this gen all they did was just make the graphics look a little bit better and put up you know like different modes and different challenges and stuff but it's the same doggone game it's the same engine it's just like if they port grand theft auto you know from ps3 to the to the ps4 yeah it's gonna look a little bit better but it's not going to be true next gen because it was developed from the ground up with a new engine and, and, and hardware specs in mind. It was de developed with last gen specs in mind. So that's why Titanfall looked like that. And they're hyping this game up to be one of the biggest release for the Xbox One. Or should I say it revolutionized or it should change the way how we play first person shooters. So yeah. So, next topic at hand is Dishonored 2. Apparently, this game is going to be revealed at E3 2014. So, I remember uh, Bethesda sent me this game for review um, when it first came out. Shout out to Bethesda. Um, this game is um, very interesting. It's a very interesting uh, first person game, and it's different. I don't remember a lot about the game, but all I know is it's a very good game because I remember the gameplay elements and the story and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, the game's supposed to be making a debut at E3 2014. So yeah, that's going to be pretty awesome for uh, fans of the game. All right, let's move on to the next topic at hand. Now, the Batman trailer. Oh, my God, I know it's just a trailer. <laughs> I know it's just a trailer. But the fact that it's coming out for the next-gen consoles, yay. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm really excited. Um, based on the trailer, y'all, based on what y'all seen so far, do you think that this is like a facelift to the Batman franchise? Most I think they need to just, like, make a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Those cinematic cutscenes are, are really, really nice. But that's, that's basically all we can base our opinion on right now is just the trailer itself. But um, I know I keep saying this in, in different podcasts and things that I never really played the games very much. I played it very briefly. But uh, like I, this one, if anything, I'll probably start off with this one, check it out, see what it's like once it's out. Since it's a next-gen game, and I kind of do want to try more and more next-gen stuff to see what the consoles are capable of. But uh, I don't really have too many thoughts on, well, 
really we don't have anything to base our thoughts on. It's just a cinematic trailer, other than the fact that the cinematic trailer looks really good, and it looks like a movie, and looks like it could be in theaters, but uh, other than that, yeah, it looks, it looks cool. I so, would I yeah. would like to purchase this game and this this is and I know this might sound crazy to some of you out there but I actually do not own any of the other Batmans I played um I played Asylum the very first one you know and I thought it was good but um I don't know if it's just me but the kind of person I am I could recognize that the game is good but the game will still not grab me you know depending on certain things of the game so I was never into this series like that but um I am definitely yeah, so interested in so what? I say good, so I'm not alone. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I'm definitely interested in this one for two reasons. One of them being, of course, this one is being made for you know the current gen for the PS4 and Xbox One, and then this is being done by the original team and not the people who did Origins, which all the fans pretty much deem as you know the weakest one in the series, and some of them say you know it's, it's mediocre and whatnot. My only problem is is that. <laughs> and I don't know if y'all heard about this, but um, a lot of gamers asked um, Rocks not not Rocksteady, but the, the people who did Origins. Which team was that? Um, Origins. 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 Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you said which team did that? Yeah. Because uh, as far as I know, it wasn't like the the Rocksteady team. They gave it to a different um, studio or something like that. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the studio's name. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but I know which I know yeah. what you're talking. Well, about. I'll, I'll just I'll just say Warner Brothers for now. Like yeah, so, yeah basically yeah. a lot of uh, fans online they asked Warner Brothers to fix some like game breaking glitches in Arkham Origins, and they pretty much felt told them no. Because we're focusing on the DLC right now. So, like, that was just a huge slap in the face of their fans. And for that, I kind of, you know, don't want to support them, you know, for that BS. So. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I actually, you're right. It's just Warner Brothers. Oh, it's just Warner Brothers? Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. It just says developers and publishers, just Warner Brothers. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, def I'm interested in this one. But for the reason I just said, they pretty much told their fans, no, we're not going to fix the game. We're focusing on DLC and you're going to like it. Like, <laughs> like that was pretty much it. Like, <laughs> whoa. Like, I kind of don't want to support them for that. So whether or not I'm going to buy it, that, that's, that's, that's still up in the air. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like I said, actually, game, go ahead. I'm okay. sorry. It it was developed by the Nether Realm Studios. Oh wait, no, that's for the Android and, and ISO. Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Um, all right. So we want to move on. Now, this right here is pretty sad. I don't know how deep this wound is, but man, this is really sad. I don't know if this is going to hurt the franchise or hurt the company but apparently uncharted ps4 writer amy Hen henning leaves naughty dog and it's crazy they didn't really go into too much details on why she left and stuff like that but for, I can give y'all a piece of, of what was said. And this is kind of like IGN was uh, actually involved in this, uh, re representing um, this matter or whatever. So pretty much they say that they can confirm that Amy has left Naughty Dog um, because of some, what, some significant um, issues or something like that with the development timeline of Uncharted. I don't know what's going on, but she is she was the lead writer and and uh and developer or whatever for Uncharted for PS4. This is lead developer as well? Yeah, she has some type of develop developing thing going on there. I don't know what's going on with that. But, um, 
Yeah. She she was the writer and a leading uh developer. Mm-hmm. So she was like one of the overseers of the um game. Yeah. But um I guess I guess for this new Uncharted that's coming out, she uh writing and stuff like that. She's the writer for the new Uncharted um for PS4. And with her leaving, I don't know what this means. This is I don't know, Pert. Yeah, go ahead. Personally, I don't feel like I don't know. I wouldn't worry about it too much because Naughty Dog is known for putting their A game into the development of their titles, and they they really go all out with everything in terms of story, the graphics, the engine in the game. They really just go all out with it. They polish the game up like crazy to give you a very nice and complete experience and satisfying. So I really wouldn't worry about it too much. I don't know. It could affect it more than I think. Who knows? But I don't know. I, I feel like that Naughty Dog will uh, they'll do something to make up for it. Uh, I yeah. don't think it's going to really affect the game because I'm sure by now the story of Uncharted 4 is like already done. You know, like story is one of the first things they get out the way when they're, you know, starting to develop a game. So I'm sure she left you know, after it was, you know, completed or whatever. So for anybody looking forward to Uncharted 4, I, I, I wouldn't be worried about that because I'm sure that story was already done before they even mm-hmm. started making, you know, the first level of the game or whatever. <laughs> but um, if they do plan on making future Uncharted games, uh, they, it, they, the series would probably be impacted. But maybe that's an actual good thing because I remember a couple podcasts ago we talked about this. We are pretty much talking about how we're tired of, you know, Drake doing the same thing, you know, over and over again. So uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe with her gone and if there ever is a fifth Uncharted, we, we can see a, a different character or a different, you know, premise or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, like you said, you know, it is what it is. And probably we're not going to be affected by that because like you said the story is already written and set in stone already so that's already out there um but you know it's all good people leave and people you know people come and go so it is what it is yeah all right so this next title i'm personally hyped for this title um the division and Pretty much, oh, yeah. oh man, this is what I am talking about. Did y'all see the engine that they showed for this game at E3 last year? Yeah. Yes, the and snow, it looks pretty amazing. What's the, what's it called, Shoke? The snow um, snowdrop uh, snowdrop engine, right? Yeah. That engine is beautiful. Like, you see tr- the trash on the ground. I mean, everything has some type of physics, some type of real-time physics. That's next gen. You cannot, you cannot tell me you can achieve the same quality, the same detail on PS3 and 360 because it would explode like putting a knife in a microwave. Like, there's no possible way you can tell me that this can be done on last gen. No, this is true next generation. When you see the snowdrop engine, you're like, oh my God. Like when I saw the game, I was like, I, I was, oh my goodness. It's like I wanted to just take my soul out of my body and look at myself and be like, ah, oh, get back in there. This is awesome. It's just, oh man, this, this is the type of game that, that just makes you say, wow. Pretty much they show off some other little um, rooftop environments in the game. Um, and I really love how the HUD is. Y'all seen how the HUD is on like, it's like not, not on the hey, screen. How he looks but, at his wrist. Yeah. Yeah. That is just awesome. It's almost like a hologram, like Tony Stark. <laughs> yeah. That is just awesome. I'm, I, I can't wait for this game. And Ubisoft, I know y'all milk titles a lot. So please do not milk the division like crazy. But this game, I'm, I cannot wait. By just looking at these screenshots, and guys, we'll try to have it up on the site. But these screenshots is awesome. It's awesome. 
um, Shoke, anybody have anything to say about just just in general about this game? Put y'all hype because I know we just talking about the screenshots and the HUD. They were showing off the the HUD of the the game and um, the rooftops, you know, like the different uh, elements of the rooftops and stuff. But anybody want to share anything on the game itself? Are they hyped for it or anything? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, aside from Infamous, I think I'm looking forward to The Division the most. Like, normally I don't get into that type of game that The Division is, but based off of that trailer, it just looks so amazing and the gameplay that they showed. And it was one of the first trailers, too, where it actually looked like a movie starting out, then all of a sudden it just zooms in and you're controlling the character. Character. Like, I've always wanted to see a game do that where it, it just looks like a cutscene or, or whatever, and then all of a sudden you're in the game. And, it, like, my mind was just blown at all the different types of effects that are on there. When they're shooting, you see the glass break on the on the, uh, the car windows. Tires mm. get blown. You see holes go through the, uh, the billboards, and light is shining through those holes. And then on the walls, you could see, like, uh, some kind of some kind of paper or something it was like rippling in the wind and everything yeah. a lot of details that you don't see on other games and then even when they went inside you can see dust particles everywhere and stuff it's this r- really went insane on the details in this game <laughs> that's so what i'm, I'm saying. definitely looking forward to it you get what you pay for man that's what it's all about mm-hmm. you paying 400 you paying 500 dollars. that's what you want to see you want to be at the edge of your seat with your jaws on the floor that's that's that is that's the experience that you want. That's next gen. That's true next gen gaming. When your engine, it's all about the engine. Again, like I said, is what your engine is doing is it's all about the visuals. When it comes to next gen, it's all about innovation. When it comes to next gen, and that game showcased to me that next gen is here. So if you all, you already haven't picked up a PS4 or an Xbox One, you slip in like an old transmission. Show. Oh, I actually haven't seen the 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 screenshots yet. I didn't even know there was some release. I don't know how I missed that. But um, yeah, the the thing I like about the division so far is how you can actually still play that game by yourself. Ubisoft, Ubisoft, for that, it's not there's not necessarily a single player mode, but you can actually do kind of like a just a, a solo kind of mode thing whenever you don't want to play with randoms or you can't play with your friends. And, you know, I, I like that, and I hope The Division is successful so more developers kind of, like, follow that route. Because yeah, multiplayer games, on, multiplayer only games are fine if they're, you know, not full price. I, that's just, I don't know, that's just me personally. I don't think a multiplayer only game should be a full 60 bucks. But, um, you know, I, I like Titanfall, for instance, you know, what if you don't want to play with, you know, with people? What if you don't have, you know, exactly. friends, you don't want to play with randoms? So let me do some, you know, offline kind of solo kind of thing. And that's what you're going to be able to do with the division. So that that's pretty cool. But what I want to see from that game, I want to just like, I want one, like at least five minute, just pure uninterrupted gameplay video of the division of people playing online. Like I would love that right now because they, they showed a little, you know, a little clip of it, you know, when it was first revealed, but there wasn't, you know, really that much action in it you know it was mostly just you know walking around the world where everything at the end they shot for like five seconds or whatever so i, I just i just want to see some some gameplay of that i think ubisoft is kind of i want to say creating a new genre but they're kind of doing this whole you know mmo but it's not an mmo and it's always online but you can still play by yourself kind of thing i i, I like how the division and the crew i like how ubisoft is like crafting those games yeah really awesome yeah really awesome and it's funny because oh show the funny thing is about uh titanfall you were saying about the you don't want to play with people but you want to play you know i like i don't know maybe because we're old school when it comes to video games just having a single player and no multiplayer that's how the games was back in the day and I don't know. It's just like right now we're just accustomed to multiplayer and stuff. But when a game when a game is just multiplayer in this day and age, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around it. Purchasing it for sixty bucks, yeah, just to play just to play with other people. 
But from what I'm hearing is that you can actually play with bots. So I'm guessing that's sort of kind of like a single player experience. Uh, you're, you're already playing with bots. <laughs> like, you already are. Yeah. There's, 30, yeah. there's 36 of them on the map compared to 12 actual humans. Only what? six of those 12. Yeah, you didn't know that? Wow. Yeah, there's a total of 48, 48 people on the map on Titanfall, and 36, like 36 of that 48 is like bots. You know what that tells me? What? That, te that tells me that the Xbox One is weak. That tells me that Microsoft server is weak because if you can't handle 48 people at a time, that that is just, that's, that's crazy, man. Let's go back to Unreal Tournament because this is like, I don't know. This doesn't make any sense to me because nobody wants to shoot against a bot. Why? A bot is like a freaking bad weed in in a bunch in a bunch of good grass you know what i'm saying it's like why would i want to have a bot while i'm i'm thinking brr, i'm rambling and going around brr, die brr, die brr, die turned out i killed like <laughs> 15 bots yeah you know what i'm saying like come on man you don't feel like a winner you don't feel like a a, a achieving person you feel like you know like a loser or something because this whole time you've been shooting at bots you want to, you know, you want to be competitive. You want to play against other people that's been playing the game. So it's like, yeah. come on, man. Like, why, why are there bots mm -hmm. in the game? I mean, this game, honestly, apparently there's a Titanfall 2 coming out or whatever. I know it's like real early, but they already start bringing up the, the news about Titanfall 2. And apparently it's going to be on PS4. And I'm like... This is the thing that pisses me off with Microsoft is that when they do exclusive things, it's normally time exclusive. It's not a permanent exclusive. And it goes back as far as, remember with their Call of Duty stuff, that's how they used to get people to buy 360s and to pre-order it, you know, for the, the, the 360 itself. Not because the 360 games look better, but at the same given time is because of the DLCs. The, you know, they'll come out at E3 or they'll come out at any other event and say, oh, you know, only on Xbox 360 will you be able to get, you know, these maps and this and that turned out to be, but it always turns out to be show time exclusive. And it lasts for like three to six months and then it goes over to the next system. So this whole Titanfall thing with them spending all that money and the fact that there is bots in the game, come on, man, that's a slap to the face. I'm sorry. <laughs> that that is just that. Yeah, I had to touch up on that a little bit because that that does that's not making any sense to me at all. It, it's just it's pathetic, you know, when you're having bots in a game when it's supposed to be full fledged multiplayer and just playing with other people, you know. That, that's that's what it's all about, man. So it's all good, though. Like I said, we're just gonna have to wait and see, Shoke, about how that you know about what you just said, how that turns out. All right. So <laughs> this is the next crazy thing. Nintendo is beating Microsoft in hardware sales. What? <laughs> Yeah, that, Mama that's Amelia. including uh, Wii U and 3DS. Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia. <laughs> now, nah, that is crazy. Mamma Mia. That is crazy. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I would expect that from with 3DS. 3DS, like, sells like crazy. But oh. uh, Wii U, like, how is it just strict... You said, Shogi said that was uh, when you put, like, the Wii U and the 3DS together. That's what you get? Yeah, that that's that's including Wii U and 3DS. That's not Wii U only. Okay. But with that okay. being said, if it was said, Wii U only, then my mind would have been blown. Yeah, but <laughs> with, with that being said, though, um, like actually, I actually follow you know like weekly sales charts, whatever, and like the Xbox One has only been doing, you know, two thousand to ten k more than the Wii U every week. So the Wii U is actually it's actually you know like kind of keeping up with the Xbox One. Hmm. Wow. 
That is that. See that that's that's some crazy stuff, man. That's some crazy stuff. And it's just yeah, you, you still have to keep in mind too, though, that the Wii U's been out for over a year now. Yeah. So really, they should be way ahead of Microsoft, but yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. It, it's just wow. <laughs> oh man, I I just don't get it. I really just don't get it at all. It's just like. I don't really care about sales, but when you see stuff like that, you know, you got to say something. Like, wait a minute. Um, now, this right here is crazy, y'all. Now, this is like an Xbox One exclusive game. And um, Quantum Break. Yeah, so how many of y'all saw the trailer for that game? Yeah, this is made by Remedy. Um this game, the developer for this game, he won, he won the Oscar. Yeah, he won an Oscar. Wow. And, yeah. And uh, I don't know, because the game, I mean, so far, it, you can't even judge the game because it's, a, it's just a trailer. But, I mean, it looks interesting um, by just looking at the trailer so far. But yeah, I just wanted to point it out that he that the guy won an Oscar, so that's kind of crazy right there for a game like that, and it's not even out yet. Um, wow. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. I mean, there's not much to that's say. Crazy. That is crazy. He well, don't. Congrats just, to him. <laughs> I know, right? Oscars don't fall out of the sky. I know that for a fact. You gotta work your butt off. Um, next thing is this, plenty of PS4 announcements coming for all regions, including AAA titles and also more PlayStation Plus for E3, more PlayStation Plus news and content for E3. This is kind of like a no brainer to me because I know Sony is going to come out guns blazing with the first thing Sony is going to do is thank the fans for supporting them. And then they're going to talk about the sales. Sales, sales, sales. For about maybe about 30 minutes talking about the sales. And then they're going to come out with the big guns with the games. Now, the announcements, all Sony got to do is keep their foot on the gas. That's all they got to do. Just keep coming out with the with the blockbuster titles, you know, make PlayStation Plus even better in their hand. So, I mean, anybody want to shed anything on that, on the announcements, what they think the announcements are, or anything of that nature? Well, mm. I did see something a long time ago. Um, there was a, I think it was that, one of uh i think it was at the ps4 re reveal actually uh -huh. there was actually a hidden thing in the background of one of the trailers that they showed where it was hinting at a, a possibility of like sony owning crash bandicoot and yeah i remember that i don't know what that was all about you saw that show yeah i saw that yeah it was like had a sign over there with a silhouette of crash bandicoot Bandicoot and it had like the Sony logo there and it was like a an arrow pointing basically it was it was a sign saying like uh Crash Bandicoot belongs to Sony or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that looks really interesting. But other than that, um I'm just looking forward to whatever they announce. Usually they do a pretty good job of getting me hyped for their games, especially when E three comes around, so like I'll just I'll just wait, see what happens and be surprised and be pleased. Amen to that. Yeah. Uh, show. Um, you know it's it's Sony, and whenever they say anything about <laughs> Plus, you know, like you just you just know it's going to be awesome. So, don't know exactly what they're going to show, mm -hmm. but the thing is, we don't need to know because we know it's going to be awesome regardless. Like, <laughs> so Sony has been yeah. doing you know a, a bang up job, you know, with with Plus, and most gamers would agree. Today, currently, with this uh, you know new generation, that now PSN you know is better than Xbox Live. So exactly, you know, when, exactly. whenever Sony says, "Oh, we got some PS Plus news," like you know, you're going to get like just tons of just 
great awesome stuff for free <laughs> you know like period exactly so, so I'm, I'm definitely excited for that yeah me too me too come out sony come out come out with all, everything you got every come just come out with punches just keep, keep it going man i'm proud of sony right now they're actually doing what they need to do now i don't know if y'all know about this but, but pretty much retro studio or studios said that the wii u is a powerhouse um I guess they're saying it because of Donkey Kong. It's fur. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, honestly, you actually, you don't really see that effect on any other Wii U games just based off what I've seen so far. You rarely I, see that at all, actually. They did a pretty good job with that fur effect on Donkey Kong. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, I think they're using the hardware to the best of their abilities. Uh, to actually put out the graphics and quality that we're receiving on Donkey Kong because the game, it looks good. It, lo it really looks good. I'm, like, blown away as far as what they, you know, what they uh, achieved on the on the system so far. I mean, it's it's it looks good. It really, lo it really do for a Wii U game. It, it really looks good. And I think they used everything that they had, you know, from the Wii U to actually, you know, push that out, so... Anything on that show? Uh, no, nah, not not really. I mean, <laughs> a, a lot yeah. a lot of people took that like, oh, we're talking about a powerhouse. Like, it's not as strong as you know the PS4 or the Xbox One. Well, I mean, <laughs> like, they're not they're not <laughs> saying that people. They're just saying they're comparing it to you know itself. They're holding it to its own standards. You know, they're saying it's it's powerful and it's in its own right or whatever. But, yeah, um, unless oh, they're just oh, wait, what was that? I was about to say, but I, I hope, like, whatever next game they're working on, which, you know, they confirmed they've been working on the next game since uh, November. Hopefully the next game they're working on could, you know, really show that quote. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, maybe maybe they're just so used to working on the, the Wii, Wii yeah. that, like, the Wii U feels amazing. Yeah, I was, I was about to going. say that, yeah. Like, part of the reason why they're saying that is because mm -hmm. they just came from a standard definition system where they had you know so many limitations mm -hmm. and stuff and now they have this thing you know that's more powerful than the, the seven the other seven gen hardware so they're like having a field day right now so <laughs> that's surprising that they'd say something like that mm -hmm. yeah that, that is man <laughs> i i just i'm just happy that's all i'm just really happy that you know that they respect the system and they're giving it giving it you know it's honor and everything like that 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 that's really awesome it's really awesome um we got some titles uh pretty much some rumored next gen games that's supposed to come out and uh there's a list of them uh Havana. this is apparently the, the basically the same people that made dead space and uh, Dead Space and Far Cry. Is it Dead Space and Far Cry? No, Dead Space, Battlefield, and yeah, that's it. People, visual games, the people behind Dead Space, and some of the people from um, the, Dice. Vi I'm visual guessing. games or visceral games? Visceral games. Visceral. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's the Dead Space people. Yeah. Um, so there were some some title call Havana uh, supposed to be con uh, nearly confirmed for release. Uh, Far Cry 4, Assassin's Creed 5. This is supposed to be in Russia. Um, a next gen Ultra Street Fighter 4. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Wait a minute, I thought Capcom didn't have enough resources to put out a next-gen Street Fighter 4. Yeah, and this is, like, kind of unconfirmed for right now, but uh, you never know. You never know. Yeah, they probably the last... think they could make an original fighter. Right probably. Uh-huh. They need to. Stop tripping. <laughs> or, like, bring back... <laughs> Wait a minute, that, this is getting kind of off subject, but just really quick. They need to bring back, like, uh, Power Stone or Ooh. Rival School, oh, some of those man, other I games that we grew up Power with. 
Oh yeah, the Power mm-hmm. Stone is the truth, man. If you if you had a Dreamcast back in the day, you didn't have Power Stone. You need to quit being a gamer. <laughs> Put on a good find something else to do. Um, now this game, this next game that I'm gonna talk about, this pisses me off like so bad, and this is a shot to Sony. Like, what is going on with the Last Guardian? They showed. This game, E3s after E3s after E3s, trailers after trailers. I mean, getting people hyped for this game. This game looks so good, but there's no release dates. There's no nothing on this game, but the status is still unconfirmed. Like, I don't know what's going on with The Last Guardian, but how many of y'all remember The Last Guardian with this half uh chicken dog looking creature and the <laughs> dude from Ico. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, how y'all feel about that game? I mean, if that game could just come out for the PS4 or something, I mean, I don't know what y'all think, but this game looks really, really awesome. I've given up on that game a I long never... time ago. <laughs> I've always seen uh bits and pieces of it. I never really knew what the game was about or how the game plays or anything like that, to be honest. But I, I've always seen it. Now every time I saw it, I was like, "What is that?" Like, I don't know. I just never looked into it. Yeah, I don't know. It looks interesting. It looks really, really interesting. You know, I'm I'm just praying that it it comes out and it be, and it comes out for PS4 exclusive for PS4. Uh, that we can mm-hmm. only hope. Um, and apparently the game the game was spotted on the PlayStation Store for some reason I guess a while back or something alright so we already know Rocksteady's new Batman game uh, that is coming out they confirmed it when was it yesterday when did the trailer came out yesterday right yes. yeah yeah yesterday Mm-hmm. So that game is coming out at I, I believe fall this year. Demon Souls 2. I don't know what's going on with that game. They showed it at E3 2013. Uh Mafia 3. Oh my god. If they come out with Mafia for the next gen, I'm going to run out of my clothes. Like <laughs> Shulk. Oh man, have you played Mafia? Actually, yeah. Any of the mafias. Mm-hmm. You haven't? Oh, nope. my God. Yo, the story in that game is so good. Like, Mafia 2 was really good. 3, I'm praying 2K pulls this off, man. I can come out with with uh, with this for PS4 and Xbox One. I can't wait to check it out. I, I really can't wait to check it out. Um, Crackdown 3. This is for the Xbox One. Um, yeah, that's supposed to be coming out. I don't, I don't know. It's kind of unconfirmed right now, but apparently it might have a chance of coming out. Hitman. I believe there is a new Hitman game that's coming out for next gen. Uh, it's almost confirmed, though. Um, so, yeah, a new Hitman game is coming out for, I believe, Xbox One and PS4. Fallout 4. Oh, my God. Fallout 4 fans, stand up. Fallout. Awesome game. Uh, yeah, this game's supposed to be coming out, apparently. And, guys, these titles, don't take them lightly. They might, they might announce them at E3. <laughs> It might announce them at E3. So, yeah, you know. Speaking on uh, uh, new titles, though, uh, mm-hmm. I don't think we yeah, – we never hit on this on any of the podcasts, but Tekken Cross Street Fighter is still in the works and should be releasing sometime this year. Tekken what? And we pretty much thought that was te- – Tekken Cross Street Fighter. And everybody pretty much thought that that was canceled, but apparently they're still working on it and it's set to release sometime this year. I'm going to say this, and this, this, this is going to be a shot to uh, Capcom and not a shot to um, Warner Brothers or NetherRealms or whatever. 
Um, Ed Boone, you know who you are, man. Shout outs to you for making Mortal Kombat. Very good franchise. One of the best fighting games of all time. Now, I hope y'all can see what I'm trying to do here. Because now when you just talk about that, why can't Capcom and the makers of Mortal Kombat come together and make a really good fighting game? Shulk, I know you feel me. I know you don't have something to say. Now, if they could just cross and make the X happen, Mortal Kombat characters versus Street Fighter characters. You know how much money that game will generate. You know how that thing will fly off shelves. I'm thinking uh, funny... Capcom doesn't want to see Ryu's head get torn off. <laughs> yeah. The funny, the, fu- the funny part, the funny part about the whole thing is, is that the people from Mortal Kombat is cool with it. They're cool. They're cool with it. They're down for it. You know, they're like, hey, you know, we're willing to work with Capcom. You know if they give us the chance. Now, Capcom is like, oh, no, no, oh, no, it is, there's no way, oh, no way we want to work with them. <laughs> you know, but it, it would be very good <laughs> if you do something like that, something cool, something shocking. Instead of coming out with all these spin-offs and, you know, half, you know, kind of like half dead games for $60. Pretty much the same game all over again for $60. I'm tired of the Street Fighter games that is pretty much the same game with added characters. Tired At of least me. this one that I brought up, though, is... Uh, well, it'll have the same characters as Street Fighter Cross Tekken, most likely. But uh, at least this one will be more of Namco's spin on the game, and we'll, see, we'll actually get to see what the, these characters look like realistic. Like, what do Street Fighters look like, or Street Fighter characters look like if they were real? Basically, yeah, that's what we'll get in... Yeah, the Tekken Cross Street Fighter version. Yeah, man, they need to do a t- uh, they need to do a Mortal Kombat Cross Street Fighter. Anytime they do that, trust me, they'll 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 be billionaires. They tripping. <laughs> uh, Next I, thing is, go ahead, go I'm, ahead. I know you're gonna have something to say. Go I, ahead, I, was about, I was about to say like, <laughs> I do think that that would sell a lot. I agree with you there, but honestly, I think that. The two development teams, I think their ideas would clash, though. Yeah. Because they have two very, very, you know, different, distinct styles. If you you had to pick, Show, uh, just going, what would you go with if you had to pick? If you had to choose one fighting game, uh, Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter, and just kind of narrowing down everything to the bone as far as the characters and how the fighting style and everything is, um, knowing how Sub Zero and Scorpion is and, and Ken and Ryu is, which franchise would you go with? Like, which franchise you think is like the best franchise, in your opinion? So you're saying like, um, mm-hmm. which which franchise would I want the game to play more like? Yeah, uh, it's definitely Street mm-hmm. Fighter. Street Fighter. Yeah, and I and I and I love Mortal Kombat. Like I played the living mess out of MK9. I have like over two hundred hours in that game. But oh wow, yeah, wow. I, yeah. I went <laughs> I went ham on that game. But uh, Street Street Fighter to me, I, I just I just rather it be Street Fighter because I like um, you know more faster pace of uh, fighting systems. Oh, okay, cool, yeah. cool, yeah. Um, now let's get back on topic. Uh, we have just a couple bit more titles and we're done. Um, Star Wars. There's apparently a new Star Wars game that's unconfirmed. Um, and this is going to be developed by DICE and EA. Um, and they're pretty much going to use the Frostbite 3 engine to push this out. Now, I believe this is that Star Wars Battlefront that's supposed to be coming out in 2015. How many of y'all remember that short trailer that they showed at E3 for this for that game? Yeah, I remember, but doesn't that already count as confirmed? Um I well, I guess you could say that. I don't know why they have it on the list. But like, is this I a new you, game or is it Star Wars Battlefront 3? Uh it just says Star Wars, uh a new Star Wars game. So I'm guessing it has to be. Yeah, and then it says we got a tease at Star Wars Battlefront 3. 
So I'm, I don't know. I'm thinking they're saying it's Battlefront 3, but it wouldn't make sense because, like you said, it's confirmed already. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay, Metro, a new Metro game, Halo Anniversary, uh, Halo 2 Anniversary, sorry. Dishonored 2, we talked about that. Dino Crisis Reboot? Oh, yes. my God. Oh, yes, and I read that. I was like, oh, my God. That. I remember that very vividly and clearly. Remember that on PS1 show? Yes, I remember oh. going going through like the forest and then a raptor jump out the bushes and like, ah! Start shooting <laughs> it. That game, that game Yo. was awesome. Yo, that was really awesome. Like, I, I'm just, wow. Yeah, Dino Crisis, yes, bring the reboot, please. Um, Left 4 Dead 3. Yes, yes, this. yes, yes, yes. Please, please bring it. Bav, y'all slipping like an old transmission, man. <laughs> they need to hurry up and, 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 and put that out. It's been too long now. Yeah, Can it. you imagine? Go ahead, show. I was just going to say, I have set over 700 hours on Left 4 Dead 2. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I love Left 4 Dead. <laughs> I know, man. Can y'all imagine <laughs> how well that thing is going to look on PS4 and Xbox One if they come out with it? Oh, man. I can't even explain the realism to y'all, man. That's going to be real hot. If they come out with that, that's going to be real hot. Last thing. Last yeah, thing. That would be gonna... like Jurassic Park the game. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> now, this, this is going to blow y'all away. This, this last piece of news we got, and we're done. This is going to blow y'all away right here. A 23-year-old genius invents a way to play N64 over HDMI to go on sale. What? To go on sale in the first quarter of 2014. Wow. Wow. Then you do that for more? The Nintendo <laughs> for more 64. Console? Yes, sir. The Nintendo 64 is still alive and kicking. Full 1080p quality. <laughs> That's crazy. Can yeah. you believe this, man? Yeah, funny thing Go about ahead, that. Joe. I just saw some uh, YouTube videos last week where these guys were modding uh, Sega Genesis and uh, Super Nintendos with HDMI out. So, wow. Yeah, so I guess this is like some, some new trend kind of thing, but... Like N64 games and, and 1080p, that that would be really awesome. I would definitely man, like pick I, one up if I had like the extra money floating around. Man, mm-hmm. that that Mike. That sounds pretty awesome. They need to. I'm I'm hoping that it does well, and that I encourages them to like do it for more consoles. Because I would love to be able to play like my GameCube games with an HDMI or Dreamcast. Like, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, that would be really awesome. I, I can't wait. I can't wait for that. It's actually true, and it's actually going to be on store shelves. That that would be really awesome, just to pick up an N64 again and actually play, you know, Mario Kart and um, all those older games on, you know, in, in 1080p. Yeah. That would be really, yeah, really right. nice. Right now, it's pretty painful for me to look at my Dreamcast and my GameCube games <laughs> on my HD TV. It, it just, yeah, it, it really lowers the quality of the game. I'd rather just play it on my standard definition TV. That's what I'm anything. saying. Yeah, if anything. And, and while a lot of uh, people will like bring up emulators, like, like there's there's nothing that will ever just feel like the actual experience of you know playing on the actual system. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely an awesome thing. I know, right? <laughs> All right. That wraps it up for this episode of our podcast. Thank you all so much. And we'll, we'll be here same time next week, uh, same place. Thank you all so much. And keep supporting the Titanfall giveaway. And that's it. I'm out.